Hello there, and welcome to this episode of the Star Wars Universe podcast. I'm your host, James, and this episode is going to just be me. No guests this month, but I do have some feedback for later on in the show. And I just want to really put out there some issues I'm having at the moment with the fandom more than anything else. And obviously go through what I've been doing in this month in Star Wars. But the main thing I've been going through this month in Star Wars is actually a real struggle with the with the fandom and with how we're all treating each other, really. It very much feels, at the moment, like no one can have a differing opinion, which is just factually incorrect, really. It's very difficult at the moment to be a Star Wars fan. I think the fandom is so divided and we have content creators out there who are going beyond basic criticism and stirring up their own particular fan base into furthering those actions and those those words into just unacceptable levels of criticism and abuse of the people who are making the shows and making the content that we say we love and that we all should hopefully find some joy in. There's a lot of negativity out there and I'm focusing on the content creators at the moment. I will come to the creators because there is some big, big issues with what's been going on there recently. There is a number of people out there who are just not giving anything a chance, not giving anything time to breathe. They are nitpicking on stuff which is just not consequential. And this has really, in my view, come to a head with the Acolyte. So obviously I went through the Acolyte in the last episode in a bit more detail with with Josh Hoyt, who has been a great contributor to the show. I do think I've built up quite a good friendship with Josh. We have some differing opinions on Star Wars, but largely we both enjoy it. And that is the main thing. We like to see good Star Wars. Now, good Star Wars is completely subjective. I know that the Acolyte, as have many projects recently, live action projects, TV projects mainly, but also the tr- the sequel trilogy films have really divided the fan base. And I think this comes back to, it's a personal problem. I myself have been open on this podcast about I struggled with the everything being decanonized. I struggled with that for years and I actually, that was when I stepped away from Star Wars for a long time because what I was seeing, I didn't recognize as my Star Wars. And I came back to it after a while because the pull of the force was too strong and I missed it. And I got to a point where I realized that I could either just enjoy the expanded universe or I could actually try and find something to enjoy in the new canon. I have really enjoyed the new canon. I have really, really enjoyed the new canon. I found a lot of stuff that I really, really like. There is some stuff I don't like, much like there is in the Expanded Universe or Legends now. Nothing's perfect and nothing is made solely for me. If there are people out there that are saying, I love this show for these reasons, leave them be. If you don't like it for those very same reasons, it doesn't matter. It's not for you personally. It's for us. And that is really the crux of what Star Wars is. Star Wars is for everyone. It is for... mainly made for kids. It was originally made for kids... We have then, at various points in our lives, mainly around the trilogy of movies that came out when we were kids, and that could be the original trilogy fans who have been fans since 1977, or it could be the prequel trilogy fans, which I fall into myself, or it could be the sequel trilogy fans who we are starting to see now come through, and actually that's their gateway into Star Wars. We just need to not gatekeep that in any way. 
if someone gets into Star Wars through A New Hope from 1977, awesome. If you got into it through Heir to the Empire in the early 90s, awesome. If you got into it through the prequel trilogy, awesome. If you got into it through the Clone Wars movie, which is widely regarded as not very good, awesome. It doesn't matter how you get into the universe, what your gateway into the universe is. All that matters is that you are in the universe and you are a fan of the universe. Now, you may choose to cosplay or play computer games or play card games or collect toys or just sit there and watch the films and nothing else. You're still a fan. You still have a equal voice in the fandom. And what I'm seeing at the moment, which is really affecting my love of Star Wars, and it's pushing me back to the mid-90s, where I didn't want to say, well, late 90s, I didn't want to say I was a fan of Star Wars because it was seen as a nerdy thing to be a fan of. Much like Star Trek or sci-fi in general, this was nerds and geeks and, and people who weren't cool and that has changed a lot now. It's a lot more widely accepted in society to be fans of these things. And geek culture and nerd culture and all the rest of it is now being celebrated and is largely accepted as a valid form of fandom. It's like following a football team, American or, or soccer, it's like following any sports team. It's You aren't going to like everything that happens. You're going to be disappointed with some stuff. You're going to be disappointed with some seasons. But that doesn't mean you're not a fan. And just because you didn't see the 1990s Chicago Bulls with Michael Jordan, it doesn't mean you're not a Bulls fan. Just like I was a Raptors fan, still am, in the NBA. And just I've been a fan of them since their inception. That doesn't mean that people who became fans of them after their championship winning season aren't just as big a fan as I am. Probably more so, depending on location. So it's it's a really difficult thing. And, and w all I'm seeing at the moment is large swathes of negativity with very, very few happy spaces. And the content creators out there who are trying to create happy spaces and safe spaces for for fans of things which are what feel like largely disliked is becoming less and less at the moment and it in and they're they're doing great work and I, I want this forum and my YouTube channel, Star Wars Universe, Y O Universe, go subscribe if you haven't already. To be that safe space. I want it to be a celebration of Star Wars and the good it has done in my life and the lessons I've learned from it and just the joy it brings me. But this last month especially has been very, very difficult with people celebrating the fact that a Star Wars show wasn't cancelled, it was just not renewed. Let's get that clear. But celebrating that, that is not okay. That's just not okay. We shouldn't be celebrating that Star Wars in any format has been cancelled. We shouldn't be celebrating the fact that someone's work that they have put months and years into has just been stopped. That's like celebrating someone getting fired from a labour-intensive job. It. Wh why are you celebrating that? benefit is that of you to you if we start celebrating when star wars gets cancelled people are going to push for it for more stuff to be cancelled and then more stuff and then more stuff and it will just get shut down and there won't be any more star wars any more new star wars and all we'll be left with is what we currently have and we've gone through those times and i'm surprised by people who are claiming to be fans for many, many years. You've experienced these times. They're, they're literally known in the fandom as the dark times through the, through the 
late 80s and 90s, before the announcement of the prequels, they are known as the dark times where there was no more Star Wars. Why do you want that back? That's a genuine question. If, if anyone out there is listening and has these thoughts and views, why do you want that back? Because that is where we are going at the moment. If that is genuinely what you want, then I'm sorry, you're not a fan. If you want something to fail, then you're not a fan of it. That's pure dictionary definition. And if you can't find joy in other people enjoying something, then just don't say anything. We don't need those sorts of fans in the fan base. We don't need gatekeepers. We should be welcoming people into Star Wars. And it's difficult. As I say, I've had my own issues with it. I have probably been a bit gatekeepy myself at times with how I've explained things or what I've said people need to go and listen to or watch or read to fully understand something. Some people are perfectly happy with just watching the product they're given. They'll either like it or they won't. And that's, and they're happy with that. They're perfectly happy with that. I'm perfectly happy with that in numerous other fandoms. I'm not okay with that in Star Wars because it's my passion. And I understand that. But what happens when we start celebrating failure or something being perceived as a failure, then Disney are just going to walk away. And this whole this whole movement online I've seen recently of not my Star Wars, um, Star Wars is, is owned by the fans. No, it's not your Star Wars. It's Disney's Star Wars. And it's not owned by the fans. It's owned by Disney. It's never been owned by the fans. It was owned by George Lucas, and he got massive amounts of stick right up to the point he sold it. Disney at the time were heralded as the saviour of Star Wars. They put out the sequel trilogy, and in my view, it was a mess. It wasn't... They clearly hadn't storyboarded that trilogy out. And I think that they have probably learnt their lesson from that. They and, and look what they've done with the High Republic. They storyboarded that entire thing out from the beginning. It was known as Project Illumination or, some, or um, something like that anyway. And that has been some hit and miss. But you needed to give it time. I've been on this podcast myself in the past saying... Phase 2 was not for me. I didn't enjoy it. At all. I pushed through it because I wanted to consume the media. And having done that and now into Phase 3, a lot of those questions and annoyances and all the rest of it are now coming to fruition. I just needed to give it time. And I know we can have our immediate reactions, but it feels like at the moment a lot of people are going, this is my immediate reaction, and I'm not going to budge. What I've seen is how I was intended to see it. There is no nuance. There is no furthering of the story. That that was happening after each episode of The Acolyte. We have to instant react to stuff. If As content creators, we do. But let's give something a little bit of time to breathe. Let's have a little look at it. And the focusing on things like Kiari Mundi's age, it doesn't matter. Why? Why does that, out of all of the things in that series, why does that matter? Why should that be the pivot point on which you make or break a series? A character's age, who we have never had confirmed in canon before, and could quite possibly be as old as they made him out to be in the Acolyte. We now have him in canon, in that time period. Roll with it. I get... Look at look at all the good stuff we got from the Acolyte. Cortosis is now officially in canon. We've got a Plagueis sighting. We've got an interesting character in Chimere. We've got all of the Jedi that knew about the Sith are gone. 
the rule of two was maintained. All you had to do was just give it a couple of extra episodes and trust in the process that it was going to be wrapped up. Now, whether you actually like the story or not is, is, is irrelevant, as I say. That's personal preference. But to criticise the storytelling aspect of it, I just don't think holds up. You might not have liked the story, as I say. You might not have liked some of the effects. You might not have liked some of the characters. That's irrelevant. That's personal preference. The story was told. The story was told coherently by people who are paid to do it. I'm not qualified to write a Star Wars story that complex and that intricate. Couldn't do it. And whether you like Leslie Headland or, or any of the actors who appeared in the show, that's fine. It's, and it's one of those things of, oh, look, I'm seeing a lot of them at the moment. Low Low viewership has caused the Acolyte to be cancelled. Again, the word cancelled is incorrect. It was not renewed. It was greenlit for one season. Leslie Headland has placed pieces on the board that could result in many more seasons, I think. I think we could get several more seasons of the Acolyte-type show. I don't think it was what we originally thought it was going to be. It was much more Jedi-centric than dark side centric but we got what we got and I think where it was left was a very interesting place and I I personally wish we were getting a season 2 mainly because I want more Star Wars I'm not excited about Skeleton Crew from the trailer I've seen I'm not but I will give it a go and I will go into it open minded and I will hopefully if I don't like the show I will hopefully find some stuff I do enjoy but I'm not gonna. I'm gonna react to it on this chat, this forum, and I will engage with people on Twitter at Star Wars Upod. If you want to follow, give me a follow. But I won't engage with people who are just trying, or who are just blatantly saying my opinion is wrong. No, my opinion is my opinion. I'm not going to engage in lengthy discussions about it. If someone asks my opinion, you're inquiring for my opinion. If you're putting a post on Twitter saying, what is your opinion of this, then I will give it. I'm not looking for a massive dialogue about it, about how I'm wrong or how you're wrong or how the studio was incorrect in doing this. No, they've done what they've done and they're going to continue to do what they do. If there is difficulty in accepting the advancement of a fandom or a intellectual property, then you have what you love. You have what brought you into it in the first place. And if that means the viewership goes down, then fine. New stuff will come in. New new viewers will come in. New fans will come in and fill that void. We have... I'm not... I'm deliberately not naming names. There are names out there that I could... could put on blast but that's not that's not the purpose of this podcast i just this is a plea to everyone of just please calm down let's be nice to each other let's stop telling each other that you're wrong for liking this or you're whatever however far that goes it it needs to stop we need to be celebrating new star wars and we need to be excited about it look at star wars outlaws all of the screen grabs I've I've seen, I haven't played the game yet myself. The graphics don't look great. But it's a Star Wars game. And you know what? It looks fun. When did graphics have to be perfect? When did we get to a point where we would only accept like cinematic games? I don't know. Growing up in the 90s, growing up in with a Mega Drive, or a Master System, or a Game Boy, or a PlayStation 1, or 2, or an Xbox, original Xbox, graphics were horrific. I remember playing Star Wars Episode 1, The Phantom Menace, on PlayStation. And I was I remember being blown away by the graphics at the time. They were awful. They were absolutely awful. And I know 
technology moves on, but people enjoy playing the game because it's a good game. It's a hard game, but it's still a good game. And we have to get back to enjoying it, enjoying Star Wars. If you don't enjoy something, then you need to step away for a bit. And I, f I feel I've stepped away from a number of things this month. And my enjoyment for Star Wars just hasn't been there as it once was, like across the board. And I've slowed down my consumption of Star Wars media. I have listened to, I'll, I'll get into what I've actually done shortly, but it's just been draining to have to constantly justify my own fandom. Or feel like I have to justify my own fandom. And, and everywhere I turn is just people shouting at each other that they're wrong. It's really disheartening when if you just take one step back from the cold face and look at the bigger picture, you can see what they're trying to do. Now, is, is it well executed? Sometimes not. But you know what? It is what it is. That's probably all I'm going to say, really, about the about the content creators and and the fandom as as a whole. The one thing I would also like to say is is I do see it from the other side. I do see why people are feeling attacked about the way certain parts of the fan base have been behaving, and the studio, whether that be Disney or Lucasfilm themselves. They need to get a grip on these, on these, um, on their employees. They do, and their social media, because all it's doing is just stoking the fire. And I haven't felt personally attacked because I'm not an OT kid or anything like that. But I do know people who have felt very personally attacked by stuff like that, and. As a studio, are you, what are you doing? Why are you allowing this stuff to be sent and put on social media and, and, and put out in the world for people to see? It's not helping. It's it's weird because I, I, I work for I work for an organization that public relations is, is a big part of. And we just have a blanket. Don't answer. You cannot answer. It has to go through the formal comms. And we can't. We just have to sit and take it. And I've I've had I've had stuff in the past which hasn't been very nice. And you just have to sit and take it. And you get to have a little chat, you get to have a little vent internally. Get it off your chest. But then move on. And I do think that there have been mistakes by the likes of Leslie Headland and the cast as a whole of The Acolyte. But at the same time, they probably feel like they're being attacked and they're just firing something back without thinking about the, the long-term consequences. We've had people within Star Wars, Daisy Ridley, Marianne Tran and John Boyega, who spring to mind, who have been run off, in air quotes, social media, by the toxic side of the fandom it's that that's not okay behavior but the way they managed it publicly i can't say anything for how they managed it personally but the way they managed it publicly was just i don't like this so i'm just going to remove myself that's the best thing if you're not enjoying something remove yourself and it's not a case of oh well look all the viewership's down fine that's a true reflection of people who are actually enjoying Star Wars, that particular Star Wars thing. I do think the Acolyte was a bit of a, a risk, given how live action especially, but how TV and movies are viewed in the Star Wars fandom. We have a much wider audience who will only consume live action stuff and we are putting something at the end of a heavily reliant on literature era so far we'll see what happens in time 
hopefully we get some more animated stuff or or other forms of media but we've had a couple of audio dramas but the rest of it has been books and comics I love the books and comics don't get me wrong I think it's a fantastic way to tell the story but there is a huge amount of the fan base out there that will only consume something on the screen with Star Wars whether that and then I'll throw the animated stuff in there as well but they have no idea who any of these people are it's obviously not going to pique their interest there needed to be something there needed to be a uh, a precursor to the acolyte coming out of this is the story of the high republic and or well, phase one phase two and phase three to come something like that just like we've had behind the scenes stuff for a lot of the live shows and they've been brilliant they they add so much into it but if if you're telling a live action consumer only that they need to read 15 to 20 books plus three years worth of comics they're just not going to do it they're not going to do it they're not going to put in that effort they want to sit down and watch Star Wars they want to sit down and hit play and if they can't do that easily with the Acolyte then they're just not going to watch it so I'm not surprised the viewership is low it was a risk I think it was a risk worth taking because you needed to learn the lesson there but it is not surprising that there was a lower viewership you don't have one of the big hooks that the other ones had everyone knows what a Mandalorian is in Star Wars it's Boba Fett it's the person who looks like Boba Fett but in a different colour suit you then introduce at the end of the first episode a baby Yoda like th there's your hook to keep people engaged Obi-Wan Kenobi anyone who is anyone within Star Wars knows who Obi-Wan Kenobi is he is part of the original trilogy and prequel trilogy and played brilliantly by two very very famous actors Book of Boba Fett I've already covered that with the Mand Mandalorian it's Boba Fett people were always going to watch that Ahsoka people have been introduced to her via the Mandalorian in live action and also, people have grown up with her through Clone Wars and Rebels. People are familiar with Ahsoka. There is no background that you need to really look into unless you want to. The Acolyte, you needed to know some stuff. And I don't know if the show did a good enough job of that in the first episode. It was a good first episode because I had a lot of the history. I know a lot about the era, but I'm not the general public in that in that sense. People are going, oh, new Star Wars show. Hang on, it's two year, two hundred years for the prequels. I don't know anyone. Who's this person? What? Why do I care? What's the hook? And I just don't think that that was thought about enough. And it's difficult. It is difficult to think about that sort of stuff because Lucasfilm are in it. They're making it. They're making, they've been making the High Republic for years at this point in time. So why would they think that they need to spell it out? And they had a crawl. But and I think they probably thought that, that was enough. Looking back, trying to put my sort of casual viewer hat on, it's not enough. It's just not enough. And it was a decent story. And the largely, I think, the characters were good. The acting was good to great depending on who it was Chimera and Soul are two standouts personally for me I really wish we'd had more Cal Naka, but that's been advanced in comic form we are getting a whole load of books based on the Acolyte as well so that might be where the story is continuing I think it's going to mainly focus on the characters on the Jedi side but that's an opening gambit we're always going to focus more on the heroes than the villains. I, I, I know a lot of the criticism of the Acolyte was how the Jedi were portrayed. And it's it's all about perspective. Star Wars has always been about from a certain point of view. Luke challenges Obi-Wan on that. 
in Empire based on what he said in Jed in A New Hope. And again, it happens in Jedi. Like it is all from a certain point of view. Like life is. I might think I'm completely right because I'm looking at something from a certain point of view. But I have to be open to looking at things from another point of view. That's discussion. We like to think we're right. But right, again, to a degree, is subjective. Especially when it comes to, I like this, therefore I am right. No, you like this, so you are right for you. I think, yeah, I think I think there are a lot of lessons to be learned from the Acolyte and the reaction of the fan base. I don't think anyone should not voice their opinion, but it should never go as far as it has done. And it's really affected the state of the fandom for me on a personal level. I am, as I said earlier, not enjoying being a Star Wars fan at the moment it is too controversial probably because if I like something and someone else doesn't like what well, they're going to say to me I don't I don't have time to be abused or I don't have any want to be abused I want to celebrate my fandom so yeah it's this isn't exactly what I wanted to do to celebrate my 12th episode. I've been doing this for a whole year. And this isn't a podcast I ever wanted to make, really. But we're here. And I enjoy Star Wars. And I want to keep enjoying Star Wars. I will always find things to like in Star Wars. And taking that stance... I'm going to shift over to what I've been doing this last month in Star Wars and then we'll move into some feedback and some... So I did put I put this question out on Twitter and to uh, a few people as well of what do you think the state of the fandom is at the moment. I've got some interesting, interesting responses back, but we'll get to those. Whilst you're here, or if you've made it this far, hit the follow button on your podcatcher of choice. If you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. It really does help. The YouTube channel is mainly Star Wars Unlimited centric, which is the new trading card game, TCG, for Star Wars. It's a great game. I've started playing it a little bit here and there, and it's really fun. It's really easy to learn. It's great for uh, enjoying with friends or if you want to get serious about it and start competing in tournaments, there are loads of tournaments around at the moment. We're only on set two as well. Twilight of the Republic is coming out in November, which is the third set, and that is the first wave of the game will then be released. It's a really, really good game. It's great for kids, as I say. It's it's really easy to pick up and play, but quite difficult to master, which is a real fine line to walk with a trading card game but yeah that's the main content of the youtube channel and and let me know if you want to see me do anything else drop comments uh wherever you can um i twitter at star wars upod i've already said that one by email star wars upod at gmail.com and if you want to come on the show and have a chat with me about your fandom and how you got into the fandom and what you think the state of the fandom is. Anything you want to talk about. Nothing is off limits in terms of Star Wars. Drop me an email. Contact me on Twitter. Get in contact with me somehow. Drop a comment on a YouTube video. I look at them all. I I will respond to them all. I would love to have some more guests out there. Um, and have I love I love talking about Star Wars, especially to people. These these episodes are always quite difficult because it's just me talking to myself. But we do it. It's good fun. But looking at what I've done this month in Star Wars, um, we'll go through it in the normal normal format. Looking at games first, Galaxy of Heroes. I've really eased off on this recently. I've had a lot going on in, in my life, um, which has not led to me being able to do as much. But also my... my Across the board, you're going to hear me say this. 
I've eased back from Star Wars quite a bit this month. Still actually looking at it, feel like I've done quite a lot for given how I've been feeling. But I have been I've still been working on the Gungans. Um I've been lifting the Ahsoka requirements up to roughly where they need to be. So General Anakin Skywalker or Gas as he's known in game. And Padawan Ahsoka, also known as Snips. Um, so I've been focusing on those as well as uh, le- gearing up Jedi Knight Cal Kestis just slowly. It's just been slowly, 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 slowly. I have not been playing the game um, as much as I have have done previously. And that is twofold. My feelings towards the fandom and Star Wars in general at the moment and also busy, busy personal life. Uh, but I'm trying to find, re- rediscover the love for the game. And hopefully that will that will come once things settle down across the board. So we'll see. Uh, on the collectible side of things, I managed to pick up another pre-release pack for Star Wars Unlimited Shadows of the Galaxy. So a video on that will be coming out, I believe, on the 9th of September. Um, so we'll see. See what I get in that. I haven't recorded that video yet, so I don't actually know what's in the pack. Uh, we've got a couple of picked up a couple of loose cards, and we're going to be doing a bigger order in the coming week or so to then film that and update the folder so if you want to see how i'm getting on with um star wars unlimited uh my collection collecting the base set of every card then youtube star wars universe y-o-u universe go give it a follow have some interactions with the videos that really does help me out um i am pleased to say that i've recently hit 50 subscribers which is very very exciting for me and i've really enjoyed this journey and i just want to keep pushing on really so thank you to all 50 people who have subscribed and yeah if you go over there hit the subscribe button um the more the more followers i get the more i can do so it's very much in your hands yeah i picked up a couple of new folders to sort of color coordinate the sets with the folder i picked them up from vault x and uh sparkle rebellion is a red folder with a black trim and shadows of the galaxy is a it's light it's, i'd say it's more lilac than purple but it's the best i could do and i quite like the lilac that's been good fun to to move into and and look into how i'm going to do it going forward comics wise high republic issue number 10 which finishes this main run it's been a good run mainly focused on skier the trend ocean jedi uh, so Trandoshan is the Bosk species, so the the lizard one from Empire Strikes Back. Um, it's it's been a good series. I I've really loved Phase Three of the High Republic, and I'm looking forward to continuing my journey through it. I know there are doing some offshoot uh, comic series, which I'm looking forward to. I need to do a bit of a pre order session, and and make sure that they're going to be hitting my my Kindle in, in on release days. Um, Inquisitors number two uh, just continues the story. It's mainly focused on Fifth Brother at the moment, I think, and it's been good. It's been good. I have really been enjoying the Inquisitor, the Inquisitorious, in in recent years. Really, having read Rise of the Red Blade last month, really, really good book. Oh, cannot recommend that one enough. It's such a good book. Um, it's it's good to see that they're continuing to explore where they are with with that little group of dark side users the inquisitorious finished off the darth maul black white and red series issue number four really really good this this format where it's black white and red the only color in the in the entire book is is red everything else is done in black and white it really works for darth maul it really does much more i've said it before much more than the darth vader version and this is a complete story it's actually a four issue story instead of the sort of three mini stories per issue which the Darth Vader one was if you're going to get into the black white and red side of things I don't know if they're going to continue doing it after Darth Maul I would definitely recommend reading Darth Maul first and then going back to Darth Vader there's much much better Darth Vader books speaking of Darth Vader volume 8 which is the dark droids arc from the main 
comic run. It was it was good. It was decent. I enjoyed it. It didn't go that far into the Dark Droid saga. I know it's picked up elsewhere in other books. So we've got the main main comic book run, which I think the main story will go into. You it, it picks up in Doctor Afra. There was the centric four issue mini arc called Dark Droids. Yeah, the Darth the Darth Vader one. It was fine. It was Darth Vader in his own comic series is absolutely fantastic. So there is there is definitely a highlight there. The story itself, probably a little bit weak, probably a little bit shoehorned in, but it was good enough. It was good enough. And on the book side of things, I finished reading Bloodlines. Really, really good book. Absolutely fantastic book. Really, really recommend that. It's 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 exactly what you'd expect it to be, reading the back of the book, but the twists and turns and the journey you go on. It's a really good, it's a really good story. Um, and I've started reading the Aftermath trilogy. So I'm currently on about halfway through book one at the moment. And so far, probably not for me. I have been told it gets better. I know it's a largely well-regarded trilogy in the fandom. And I don't know, I guess I was probably expecting it to get going a bit quicker than it has we'll see we'll see if i like it or not and if i don't like it that's totally cool that's been about it really for me this month it's it's been a quieter one but we have had a long conversation about why that is so we will see how we go so turning our attention to what other people have done i'm going to start on the state of the fandom question first um so Haley hobbs has come back to me and said i think the fandom is waiting to see something they're familiar with which i responded with a very political answer uh, todd replied with apathetic and waiting for something to come out that they connect with i think that slightly more to the point, but also <laughs> a fairly political answer. It's, I see, I see what a lot of people are saying with that, and I don't disagree. We like familiarity. We do like familiarity. Those are the two answers I've got from from that question being posted. I think a lot of people on Twitter didn't really want to put their thoughts out there for reasons I've already discussed. Um, so feedback wise. Dan Griffin at Dan Griffin 21 on Twitter has said, I've watched the first two series of Rebels and started the third. You were right. Ezra becomes much more bearable. Favorite crew members are Sabine and Chopper. Favorite side character is Bendu. The mall stuff was a holy hell moment. Really enjoying it so far. Now, Dan, I have edited that because this is a family show. Um, <laughs> but I'm glad you're enjoying it. The Darth Maul reveal at the end of Rebels Season 2, Twilight the Apprentice, is fantastic. And Ezra, through Season 3 and 4 of Rebels, is brilliant. It's brilliant character growth. And it's just, it's just the best series. It really is. Rebels is the perfect series. In my opinion, it starts off typical sort of kids cartoon type thing, and you just grow with it, and it's it's just fantastic. And he also followed up with, "I've also invested in Marvel Unlimited and plan to get started on some of the Star Wars comics. Any suggestions are welcome." So, as I've already said, Darth Vader, the Darth Vader run in general is phenomenal. Outside of that, I would say there are enough mini arcs that you can literally just pick a character you like. If you want sort of a Indiana Jones-esque sort of swashbuckling adventure, Dr. Afra, and to be perfectly honest, her two droids, Triple Zero and BT-1, are 
everything you would want from an evil 3PO and R2-D2. It's brilliant. Aphra is a fantastic character and a brilliant introduction to um, into the Star Wars universe. There are so many comics. Uh, if you want to go back in time into the Legends stuff, Jedi vs. Sith, it's a comic adaptation of what became the Darth Bane trilogy, which if you want to hear my thoughts and others on the on the Darth Bane trilogy, you can go check out the uh, Spark podcast source pages. We did we've done a review of the entirety of that trilogy now. Path of Destruction, Rule of Two and Dynasty of Evil, or Dynasty of Evil, depending which side of the pond you're on. But yeah, there's there's a lot of great comics out there. So if you want to just drop us a message and let me know characters like or time periods even the high republic it's a great place to get into the comics because it's brand new doesn't affect anything else has implications later on but it sets everything up there's nothing really before it in canon at the moment so yeah drop us a message let us know some favorite characters and some favorite time periods or ships or anything like that bendu yeah couldn't agree with you more he's a brilliant character and i i'm desperate to know more about him the lore side of Star Wars is where I really find my feet and I really enjoy playing in that sandbox. So Bendu, the Mortis Gods, which is Clone Wars Season 3, Episode 15, I want to say, but I might be wrong on that. It's in around about the middle of Season 3. There's a three-episode arc on the Mortis Gods, which is so lore-packed, it's unreal. And that then also feeds into the Ahsoka series and especially Ahsoka season two it looks like so that's that's been great that's been great thank you Dan for for reaching out and and for giving stuff I recommend a try that's that's exactly what I want this podcast to be us to be able to recommend stuff to other people so turning our attention back to Todd he has recently started playing Galaxy Heroes just as my just as my fandom on it is is dipping off after a years long absence so let me know where you're at and if you want any help or guidance I'm probably what's classified as an end game player now um, I'm just shy of 9 million GP I think it goes up to about 12 million at this point in time with the amount of characters out there but I do know some good teams to build depending where you are and happy to give any guidance or assistance uh, and he's got caught up with the Darth Vader comic run on Marvel Unlimited. So we probably have just read the same thing. The the um, Dark Droids run. So let me know what you thought on that, Todd. Uh, I've, I enjoyed it, but yeah, it's, it didn't really affect the, the Dark Droids element of it, in my view. Uh, and he's still reading Rise and Fall of the Galactic Empire. Now, the Rise and Fall of the Galactic Empire is an in-universe academic study of what caused the rise and the fall of the Galactic Empire which is a really cool concept and I can't really wrap my brain about how you would even start to think about writing that it's it's a really cool concept for a book and I, I, I will get to it at some point but yeah it seems like this seems to be a bit of a slow month across the board here I think we're all running on empty a little bit Haley Hobbs has sent me a list saying book wise she has read Darth Plagueis The Crimson Corsair and the Lost Treasure of Count Dooku I'd never even heard of that one where are you finding these books Haley? The Phantom Menace novelization it's a brilliant novelization and The High Republic Phase 2 Tales of Enlightenment which is the collection of short stories and I have Starlight Stories which has been sat on my bedside table for probably about eight months at this point. I just haven't had time to get around to actually picking up a physical book, so I need to I need to pick up Phase Two: Tales of Enlightenment. I also need to actually read Starlight Stories, comics, The High Republic, Phase Three, Issue Number Six, Darth Maul, Black, White, and Red Number One, Phantom Menace, Twenty Fifth Anniversary Special. That was a good comic. I enjoyed that. Free Comic Book Day 2024, Star Wars number one. I have that digitally and physically, and I still haven't read it. I just haven't got around to 
reading it. I haven't read 2023s yet, I don't think either. Um, I, I really need to get to those single one shots. It'll take me 10 minutes. Well, I just need to find 10 minutes to sit and read it. And then Mace Windu, The Twilight Run, number one to four. Now, is that the recent Mace Windu run? I didn't know it was called The Twilight Run. If so. But it was decent. I enjoyed that. Not, I'm not a huge Mace Windu fan. But it was fine. I enjoyed it. I remember reading uh, Shatterpoint, which is a now Legends book. But it was set in the Clone Wars. And it had his Padawan whose name is escaping me, Depa Balaba, I think, who then becomes Kanan's master. That was a really good book, but it was long, and there was a lot of Mace Windu, unsurprisingly. Of that little series of Clone Wars novels, Yoda, Dark Rendezvous, phenomenal novel, no, phenomenal mop. Why can't I talk? Phenomenal novel. There we are. Really, really good book. And it's Yoda just being Yoda. And it has Count Dooku in it. And it's got R2 in it. Great book. TV and movies. Haley's rewatched The Mandalorian. And she said she forgot about Grogu getting IG-12 to walk around in, which is still hilarious. It absolutely is. The yes, 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 no, no, no. As a way for him to communicate. Genius. Absolutely genius. Really, really enjoyed that from season three of The Mandalorian. Merch wise, Star Wars Dark Side or Light Side Oreos, and she got Dark Side this time. She bought Starlight Stories and Tales of Enlightenment. So there you go. Haley is almost certainly going to read Starlight Stories before me. And fair enough. In terms of Darth Plagueis, the book, she said that she didn't love it. So, a controversial opinion there. <laughs> But then she said, I'll amend that to say I didn't love the first part. Now, it's been a while since I've read Plagueis, so I don't remember what the first part is. It's on my list of things to read because we're covering it next on the source pages, the Sacred Jedi Text episodes, which is Haley, Brian, myself, and Todd. So she's also said James Lucino is not really her favourite author. That's fine. That's fine. It, you're always probably going to struggle if it's not your favourite author. author. I think that's going to just about do it for this month. Not the happiest of episodes to, to record, but one I think I needed to do. And if you like this episode, um, sorry, but normally I'm a lot more upbeat about Star Wars and it's just been a, it's just been a heavy couple of months really in the fandom. But if you like the show, and want to support the show, give it a follow on your podcatcher of, co of choice. Drop a subscribe on the YouTube channel and leave a review. Leave a review for the for the show. Apple is best, but anywhere. Spotify will, will also do, or anywhere that you can leave a review, go and leave a review. Yeah, I've, give, I've dropped them in, sprinkled them in through the episode, but the socials for the for the show are at Star Wars U Pod Y-O-U it's always Y-O-U on Twitter at Star Wars U Pod at gmail.com and then the YouTube channel is Star Wars Universe but again Y-O-U Universe and our next episode is going to be the true one year celebration so what I would like to do is hear from you guys on the socials just mentioned what have you enjoyed in Star Wars in the last 12 months not one month, 12 months. What's been your highlights? There's been a lot of content that's come out. Books, TV, comics, audio dramas, all sorts. Merch. Is is your favourite thing the Yord action figure or the Malgus action figure you picked up? Or Funko Pops? Whatever it, whatever it may be. Let me know. And next episode is going to be a true celebration of the last 12 months of Star Wars releases and I want to hear what you have enjoyed so until then thank you for listening and may the force be with you always <laughs>